What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at another AI agent tool. This tool is called GPT Me. This agent lives in your terminal equipped with local tools, can write code, use the terminal, browse the web, and has vision capabilities. It's self-correcting and you can get it up and running within just one to two prompts. We're gonna talk about how you can set it up, use it, and how it also compares to some of the other AI agent tools we've covered on this channel, such as Agent Q, Agent E, Open Interpreter, and more. Let's dive right into it. All right, so a lot of you guys know that we've covered Agent Q on this channel. We also covered Agent E. Also, we've covered tools like Open Interpreter, and we recently covered Open Macro. So we've covered a bunch of different AI agent tools. Now, GPT Me does have some similarities to some of these tools, but it also has some differences. So we'll quickly go over GPT Me on their README right here, go over some of the features, and I'm going to show you how you can set it up right now. So a few of the features is code execution. It can read, write, and change files, make incremental changes with the patch tool. It can search and browse the web, it can use the browser via Playwright with the browser tool, which is how a lot of these agents use the browser with Playwright. It has vision, so it can see images referenced and prompts, screenshots of your desktop and web pages, and then self-correcting. So output is fed back to the assistant, allowing it to respond and self-correct. It supports several different LLM providers, such as OpenAI, Anthropic, OpenRouter, or you can serve it locally with Llama CPP. So you can use Pipe with this as well. It has automatic naming of conventions and then optional basic web UI and REST API. So to get started with this, you can simply just run pip x install GPT me. Now I will say if you're on Windows, you may have a bit of trouble trying to run this in PowerShell. So I recommend probably using something like WSL so you can use the Linux terminal. And that's what I'll be using in this video. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you shouldn't have any issues. You can simply just run pip x install GPT me. Once you run that, you can simply run GPT me. And then this will pop up new conversation or load previous ones. So you can select to either load previous ones, which we don't have any right now or select a new conversation which we'll do right here so now it's saying we have no api keys so we can input an api key for open ai anthropic or open router okay for the sake of this i just use open ai so i'm going to load up that same conversation that we had here so now you can see here that it found an open ai api key and that's what we're using all right so here you'll see we can actually enter our prompt it says user here so now we can actually ask gpt me to do something all right, so here I'm asking, what is the current time and weather in Sydney, Australia? Okay, so I got an issue here. You can't just actually ask it directly like that to search the um, web like so. You actually have to do a couple things. So I went to their docs right here and I'll leave their docs down below. Um, if you ever get some issues and you're wondering, you know, if you're doing it right, I would suggest checking some of this out. So if you go to tools, you can see here we went down to the browser tool. And first off, you need to make sure that um, you this should probably get installed. I believe if you install uh, GPT me normally, if you're having issues, you can try running this command again and just doing uh, using the flag dash dash force if needed. But I believe the browser capability should be installed with it um, normally. Um, and then you just have to run GPT me and then in, in uh, quotes here. Um, you're doing forward slash shell playwright install chromium. And if we go here, you can see here that it installed chromium. So you're actually going to need, um, playwright installed on your system. So you can run NPM, um, and npm install dash g playwright and then make sure you run the play install playwright before you run the uh the gpt me shell playwright command right here to install chromium once you do that you can run that command it's going to start install cro installing chromium now you can see chromium and fmpeg have successfully been installed using playwright if you need to perform any specific tasks using playwright please feel free to ask so now we're going to ask it that same question i'm going to copy this right here and paste 
paste it in over here. Okay, so now it's saying to provide that with the current time, I'll need to take a look at this information online. Let me do that for you. So now it should be looking for that information. I'm going to say, okay. Okay, so it's saying, let's begin by finding the current time in Sydney. So I wrote some Python code right here. Search current time in Sydney. We'll say yes to allow to execute the code. And now we can see it's browsing the code. Okay, it looks like there was an error. Seems like there was an issue with launching the browser using Playwright. It suggests that the executable doesn't exist in the expected location. Okay, so it said install Playwright again. So um, I'm just saying yes to allow it to install it. Okay, so it said it installed it. Now it's going to use a different approach. I'm going to say okay. Okay, so it's going to write some Python code. I'll allow it to execute. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents. AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. Okay, so Playwright's now been installed. Now it's going to run Python uh, Sydney underscore weather. We're going to say yes. Okay, so that file didn't exist. So now it's creating the file. Okay, now it's going to run it. Let's say yes. Okay, so it said the necessary binaries weren't installed for Playwright. Now it said that they are. So let's go ahead and try to run this again. Okay, indicates a query selector method did not find the element. Okay, sure. Okay, so it got the right answer. It did take a little bit of time. And to be honest, quite frankly, some of that was if you're using WSL, make sure you configure your environment just a little bit if you don't have that configured already. Um, just like with installing the basics, Python, Playwright, all that good stuff. And you can see here we got the weather for Sydney right here, 19 degrees Celsius, scattered clouds. And then we got wind right here, forecast, feels like. Okay, so it said the script returned the following weather, but the time wasn't found. All right, so we could adjust this and incorporate the time, of course, but we're not going to waste time on that right now. Okay, I'm going to try to ask it, what's my screen look like to utilize the screenshot tool? So to capture a screenshot, we would need to use the screenshot tool. Let's take a screenshot now. I'm going to say, okay. okay. This is an annoying thing. Sometimes it will say it's going to do something, but it won't call the tool. So I'm going to say use screenshot tool now. Okay, so sometimes it glitches out like that. I'm going to start a new terminal and try it again. Okay, so now you can see that it is initiating the process for the screenshot tool. So we're going to say, okay. Okay, so a screenshot was saved. Would you like to view it? Yes, you view it and explain it. Okay, so I don't know if I'm missing something here, but it's saying let's view the screenshot. Doesn't seem I have the capabilities to directly interpret images. However, if you describe the image, then I said use the vision capability. You should be able to view it. And then it said I opened the screenshot, but now it says again, um, I don't have uh, the capabilities. And if we go over here to the readme, you can see, can see images referenced in prompts, screenshots of your desktop and web pages. So if I'm doing something wrong, if you guys know how to get this to work, let me know. Or maybe it's a bug within GPT me. All right, so next thing that I want to show you guys is the server. So if you go to server right here, you'll see that GPT me has a minimal REST API, a, a web UI right here. So um, you're going to need to run this command. Now, before you run this command, you're going to need to install Flask. So install Flask, you can do pip install Flask. Now for me, after I installed Flask and ran GPT me dash server, I had an issue right here. So I actually had to run pip x, um, not pip x install Flask. I had to run pip x inject GPT me and then flask so then flask so then it injected package flask into vn environment for gpt me so if you're having any issues you can run gpt or pip x inject gpt me flask but then after that you run gpt me server which is right here and it should start the server as you can see here once the server starts you'll be able to access the web ui on localhost 5000 so if i go to localhost 5000 here you'll be able to see if i refresh we have all the different conversations that we've been having 
um, since we started this video. So we have all these different ones within here and we can go ahead and start a new conversation. So let's start a new one right here. Test you can even show the initial system messages right here. So you can see the system command. All right. I could go ahead and say, generate me the pong game in Python and click send. All right. You can see here in the uh, terminal right here, it's installing the Pi game. So it's installing Pi game package. And now it's saying creating a simple Pi game. You can see the shell command it ran. And then the output right here. Okay, now I'm telling it to start the Pong game. Okay, so it didn't save the Pong game. So now it created the Pong game and saved it in a file called Pong.py. All right, so it saved it. Now I'm going to say launch it. Okay, and it launched it. All right, so we got a decent Pong game here. Now I'm going to tell it to add a scoreboard. All right, so I told it to add a scoreboard and to make the ball red. Okay, so it made a mistake here with patching and saving the file but i just said question mark and it looks like it got it correct now so i'm gonna say start it okay and here we go we got a much better pong game the ball is red and we actually have a scoreboard now yep so not a bad pong game at all all right so i think you guys get the gist of this i actually really like the ui feature a little bit also up here you can see how many messages you send when it was last modified and when it was created so all in all i think gpt me is a pretty useful tool it's a pretty good ai agent it's still in development right so i think it definitely has a a, a good way to go right now in comparison to some of the other ai agent tools like agent q agent e um open interpreter i don't think it's quite there to some of those ones um, I definitely do. I personally think it's better than open macro, at least from what I've seen in the demo. Of, of course, I didn't get to try everything out from each tool, but from what I personally saw, I definitely thought it was a little bit more uh, advanced. For me, I was having a little bit trouble with some of the different tools within GPT me, like the screenshotting tool, the viewing of the image and some other ones, but we did make the browser work and whatnot and i really do like the web ui feature and it does have good documentation here so if you are encountering any issues you can definitely check out the docs which i'll leave linked down below other than that guys that is it for gpt me let me know what your thoughts are about gpt me in the comments down below and also let me know what is your favorite ai agent that you've used is it agent q agent e agent k gpt me open interpreter or maybe it's a different ai agent that i haven't covered yet if you do know of a different ai agent that you think is better than a lot of these tools or really top notch let me know and i'll do a video on it thank you guys so much for the recent 9k subscribers really appreciate the support 10k on the way if you're new to the channel we upload videos every single day on ai automation marketing sales business growth if you got some value here and you like that type of content make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads other than that, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, strikecommunity.com, I'll leave a link down below to our free Discord channel and Facebook group so you can join there and get some free value. Also, too, guys, if you need help growing your business from lead generation to systems, CRM optimization, sales process optimization, AI appointment setter implementation, all that different stuff, check out strideagents.com or go to executivestride.com forward slash apply and book a call with my team and we'll see if it's a good fit or not. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.